have the rings? You have the rings? Okay. The ring bear has them? Okay. <laughs> Would everyone please stand? You may be seated. Who gives his bride away in marriage? My family and mine. There you go, now hand her up. All right. All right. You ready? Hey, we can run away right now if you want to. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Friends, we're here today in the sight of God, family and friends, to share the joy as Paul and Keeley enter the holy state of marriage. They stand before us today to join their hearts and their lives together. We're here today to wish you the best of weddings and the best of marriages. Your family and your friends are here today because we celebrate you and we salute what you are doing and we are glad this is happening. Now the Bible teaches us that God is love. He is the embodiment of love. He is the epitome of love. He's actually the standard of sacrificial love. And see, sacrificial love is what is required to make a marriage work. We must remind ourselves that God loves us and God created us to love one another. We don't always think of it this way, but God designed the two of you from a divine blueprint to love one another. When Paul, God, when Paul designed you, he designed you to be loved by Keely. And Keely, when God designed you, he designed you to be loved by Paul. And God is going to give you the strength each and every day to love one another if you will rely on his strength. God loves us and he wants us to love. And our loves find meaning and clarity in the love that he gives us. It finds purpose and direction, identity and significance. It finds happiness when we are loved and when we love in return. Again, your family and your friends are here today to celebrate this event. Let me remind you that God created marriage Himself in the Garden of, of Eden from the very beginning. Marriage was God's idea. Your parents want your marriage to be wonderful. Your family and your friends want your marriage to be wonderful. God wants it to be wonderful even more than the rest of us. And He is going to do everything He can to help you have the best of marriages. Marriage has many purposes. It's given to comfort our sorrows and to magnify our joys. Unfortunately, your married life will have some sorrows. You rely on each other and your family and your God, and He will see you through. Marriage is given to build on our strengths, to chisel away our weaknesses. It's given to clarify our joys and to determine our priorities. And because we are relational beings, marriage adds a huge dimension to our lives. Marriage is the clasping of hands. It's the joining of hearts. It's two lives becoming one. Now, you know this. You're smart. Marriage is not easy. Your marriage will strand on the strength of the commitment you make to one another. 
and your willingness to work through the tough times. I encourage you to look to Jesus. I don't say that because I'm a preacher. I say that because it's really true. Listen, we know that Jesus gives us peace, love, and joy. But He also gives us romance and He gives us intimacy. And He gives us marriage. And like I said, nobody wants your marriage to work more than God. Now, I'm going to ask you to express your vows of love and devotion. I'll read them off to you and your response will be, I do. Are you ready? You sure? You want to back out? We can, we can just elope. I'll go with you. All right, just, just checking. Paul, do you take Keely as your wife, promising to love her with all that you have? Do you pledge your commitment to her? Do you promise to love her, protect her, and care for her for the rest of your life? I do. All right. Keely, do you take Paul as your husband? Do you pledge your heart to him, committing to love him, honor him, and stand by him for the rest of your life? I do. All right. Now, I'm going to ask you to make your profession of commitment by repeating after me. Paul, you'll go first. I, Paul, join myself to you. I, Paul, join myself to you. To have and to hold. To have and to hold. Through good times and bad. Through good times and bad. I promise to cherish you. I promise to cherish you. Provide for you. Provide for you. Protect you. Protect you. And to serve you. And to serve you. From this moment forward. From this moment forward. We shall be one. We shall be one. You did that very well. <laughs> now, Keely, you will make your profession of commitment to Paul. I, Keely, join myself to you. I, Keely, join myself to you. I promise to love you. I promise to love you. Cherish you. I cherish you. To share your joys. And your, and your sorrows, to laugh with you, to, laugh with you. to, cry, with you. to cry with you. From this moment forward, this moment forward we, shall be one. we shall be one. Ah, very good. Now, the, again, the Bible describes the kind of love that God wants y'all to have, and it reads like this: Love is patient, and marriage is going to require patience. You're going to have to be patient with one another because you're not always going to be perfect, and so there's going to be times that one of you just ticks the other one off. <laughs> patience is required. Love is kind. Love is not jealous. Love does not brag and it is not arrogant. Love does not act unbecomingly. It does not seek its own way. It is not provoked. And listen to this. It does not take into account a wrong suffered. You know what that means? Love doesn't keep score. Love doesn't keep score. So you just turn it loose, right? Love does not rejoice in unrighteousness, but rejoices with the truth. Love bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. Love never fails. Now you have determined to uh, exchange rings. And I want to remind you that although a ring is small, it's very precious. It's very significant because it does symbolize the commitment and the love that you share with one another. Rings represent the commitment you have made to each other before your family, your friends, and your God. Rings are made of precious metal, and they remind us that love is not cheap and is not common. And the never-ending circle in a, in a ring is a symbol of the continuing love that you have for one another, a love that hopes all things, and a love that never fails. And so each time you glance at these rings, may they remind you that you're married to somebody uniquely special that's committed to you and deserves your whole heart. All right, there we go. So put that on her. Put that on her finger and hold it in place. There you go. Perfect. All right, Paul, with, repeat after me. With this ring, with this ring I, commit to you. I commit to you. It's a token of my love. It's a token of my love. Freely given to you. Freely given to you. Excellent. Very good job. All right. That's a little easier. There you go. All right, Keely, you'll repeat after me. With this ring, With this ring I, commit to you. I commit to you. It's a token of my love, of my love. Freely, given to you. freely given to you. There you go. Now, as an act signifying the unity of your lives and your marriage, you have a tree that you're going to plant, a tree that will grow with the passing of time, a tree that will weather the storms of life and withstand the difficulties, a tree that will stand with you throughout your life together. You have specifically chosen a myrtle tree. A myrtle tree has unique symbolic value. It is actually a biblical tree. In the Old Testament, 
all the Jewish families would have myrtle trees in their houses. They would plant them and grow them specifically because the myrtle tree reminded them of the promises of God. And the promise of God today is He will make your marriage strong if you'll let Him. So, let me step out of the way and let you... So Paul and Keely, you have come before your family and your friends and before God and you have demonstrated your love, you have stated your commitment and you have taken vows of faith and devotion. You have sealed these vows, the promises by the giving and the receiving of rings. Therefore now as a representative of Jesus Christ and before your family and your friends as witnesses, I pronounce you with great joy, husband and wife, what God has joined together, let no man put asunder. Paul, you may kiss your bride. <laughs> Take his arm. All right, wait, 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 wait. Let me announce you. Let me announce you. Ladies and gentlemen, it gives me great pleasure to present to you Mr. and Mrs. Paul Morrow. Thank <laughs> you.